The repeat command allows you to place a component multiple times in an assembly. You can right click on a component and choose repeat. And this opens up a dialog box that lists the constraints for the component. But an alternate way of executing the command is by using the placement folder in the model tree. In this case, you can select the constraint that you want to repeat, right mouse click and hold and choose repeat, and then pick the new location for the component and its place in the model. And this command works with multiple constraints as well. So for example, I can select both constraints using the control key, right mouse click and hold and choose repeat, and then I can pick my references and then right mouse click and hold and choose new location and place it in my assembly over and over again. And when I'm happy, I hit the check mark and I've placed the component multiple times. You can quickly and easily edit parameters for multiple models by adding columns to the model tree. Click the settings button above the model tree, then choose tree columns, change the info dropdown list to model params. If the parameter that you want doesn't appear in the list, type in the value and hit the add button. Repeat for any additional parameters that you want. And if, if it appears in the list, just go ahead and add it. And I click OK and I can see the different values in here. Then if I want to change a parameter, I can click in the cell. This is a Boolean parameter, so I can change it from no to yes. And if I click in a parameter cell that has a predefined list, I'll be able to choose from the drop-down list. And if I click in a cell for a parameter that doesn't exist, I'll be able to create it in the model. And in this way, you can edit parameters for multiple models. Sometimes in an assembly, you have multiple components that you want to place over and over again together. For example, here I have a bolt and a couple washers and then a nut. You could create them as a subassembly, but that wouldn't make sense for my bill of materials or how I want to organize my model. So instead of using a subassembly, I'm going to create what's called an assembly user defined feature or UDF. To do that, I'll go to the tools tab and then choose UDF library. In the menu manager, I'll click create. Then I'll type in a name for the group. Then you have the option of standalone or subordinate. Subordinate means that the UDF that I'm creating is going to be tied to this particular assembly model, but most of the time I don't want that. So I choose standalone, then click done. Now it's prompting me to select the features or components to add to the UDF. I'm using the control key to select the ones that I want. Then I'll click OK done and done return and now I have to write prompts that will help someone place this UDF later on and it's telling me that the surface that's highlighted in red is used by multiple components and I can choose whether I want to write one prompt or multiple prompts most of the time I just write a single prompt and this is going to be my top placement surface now it's highlighting the cylindrical surface in red. And now it's highlighting the bottom surface. And again, it's used by multiple references. So, so I'm just going to write a single prompt and I'll call that my bottom surface. Then you have the opportunity to retype a prompt if you got the name wrong or you want to call it something different, but I'm happy with it. So I'll click done return. And then by clicking OK, tells me that the fastener group has been stored in the model. So now, let's say I want to go ahead and place that UDF over on the other side. To do that, I'll go to the Model tab. And then 
Up here in the Get Data group, we have User Defined Feature. And let me go to my working directory where my UDF is stored. And it's stored with a file name that ends in .gph. Then I'll click OK or Open. And we get the Insert User Defined Feature dialog box has this advanced reference configuration. When I click OK, it gives me a dialog box that allows me to select the different references. So, first the top placement surface. It auto advances to where I can select the cylindrical surface. And now the bottom surface. And I see a preview of it. Hit the check mark. And the UDF is created in my model. They're located in a local group. If you don't like the local group, you can right click on it and there is in the mini toolbar an ungroup command. And so the group will then be sort of exploded in the model tree. Lastly, if you create a bunch of UDFs, you can store them in a folder and then use the configuration option pro underscore group underscore dir to have Creo Parametric automatically go to that folder whenever you click the user-defined user feature icon to place a UDF in the model.